Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through Osgood Schlatter's disease. This is a super important condition for our pediatric and adolescent patients. And so today I'd really love to give you some more information about it and some top tips to help you manage your patients. If you do enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button as it's the best way that we can spread more information around the physiotherapy world. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So Osgood Schlatter's disease is a condition which generates pain and swelling at the tibial tuberosity of the shin bone, which we're going to show you in a second. But this condition is most commonly found in adolescents between the ages of 10 and 15. Now previously we thought that this condition most exclusively occurred in boys. But as girls have become more active in sports at a younger age, you may well find that this condition occurs in both your male and female adolescent patients. And it's most likely to occur in those children who are very active around those ages, being involved in sports which involve lots of activities such as running, jumping and twisting. So why is that? So all of these sporting movements heavily utilize the quadriceps muscles. Now the quadriceps muscles insert into the patella tendon, which itself inserts into the tibial tuberosity, the area that we mentioned where our patients are going to experience their pain and swelling. And that's because repeated activation of the quadriceps muscles can cause repeated stress of the growth plate at the tibial tuberosity resulting in the pain and swelling specifically for these patients. So as well as those symptoms of pain and swelling, you may also find that your patient struggles with range of movement or has difficulty in weight bearing due to their pain, particularly after a sporting activity which may have inflamed their symptoms. Now some doctors or orthopedic consultants may wish to order an X-ray for these patients Number one, it could be to see whether or not the tibial tuberosity has become fragmented as a result of that repeated stress. But particularly if your patient has had a trauma, an avulsion of the patella tendon and therefore of the tibial tuberosity could be something that your consultant wants to look for, particularly as the symptoms of pain, swelling and reduced range of movement and difficulty weight bearing could be present with that condition. So it helps with differential diagnosis. So what could we do about it? Well, the first thing that's really important to do is to educate not only your patient, but also their parents about what Osgood Schlatter's disease is all about. And the first thing I should mention is to explain to these individuals that Osgood Schlatter's is not actually a disease that includes bacteria or a virus or anything like that because I had Osgood Schlatter's as a child, and that certainly was something that worried me. But it's also really important to highlight that self-management strategies for Osgood Schlatter's are the key. And the first thing that you might need to do is talk about activity modification, whereby depending on the child's severity of symptoms, you may need to reduce the amount of sport that that child is playing on a daily or weekly basis. Now, it may not mean that the child has to stop sport altogether, but certainly reducing the load through that quadriceps and through that patella tendon onto the tibial tuberosity is going to make their symptoms less irritable over a period of time. Now, some other simple strategies that could help is icing the knee, particularly after activity, and also some gentle stretches at the same time, particularly as some sources suggest that a tight quadriceps muscle may make that patient more susceptible to Osgood Schlatter's. But on that note, it's also important to say that exercising and strengthening other muscles around the leg, including the gluteal muscles, the hamstring muscles, and the calf muscles may also be a really important factor in reducing the load placed on the quadriceps and thus placed on that tibial tuberosity. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to see more of our content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out on Instagram with the username at Clinical Physio. It's been a pleasure to talk to you today about Osgood Schlatter's disease. I'm Khaled Maidan and we'll see you really soon right here on Clinical Physio.